हाई फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माई चैनल टूडेज टॉपिक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ वैक्टर physical quantities having magnitude direction and obeying laws of vector algebra are called vectors so everyone know that what are physical quantities physical quantities are nothing but the quantities one can measure by using any one of the measuring instruments for example you can measure the length of a stick or you can measure the weight of any object or you can measure the time all these are measurable physical quantities so here the measurable physical quantities are nothing but you can measure those quantities by using any one of the measuring instruments such quantities are said to be physical quantities there are some parameters or some characters like fear happiness or sweet you cannot measure there is no any measuring instruments available so any physical quantities having magnitude direction and obeying laws of vector algebra are called vectors so let us try to understand some examples of a vectors for example the displacement velocity acceleration momentum force impulse weight thrust torque angular momentum angular velocity etc are called etc are examples for the vectors what is displacement you know that the change in position gives the displacement what is velocity change in position by time gives the velocity what is the acceleration change in velocity by time gives acceleration what is momentum mass into velocity what is force mass into acceleration what is impulse force into time what is weight mass into gravity what is thrust it is nothing but liquid pressure what is torque it is rotational force what is angular momentum it is rotational momentum angular velocity rotational velocity all these are examples for the vector quantities okay now let us try to understand in this case for example if a physical quantity has magnitude and direction both then it does not always imply that it is a vector imagine if you having there are certain physical quantities these physical quantities they are having magnitude what is magnitude magnitude is nothing but a just number if you say the velocity is 10 meter per second what is 10 10 is magnitude meter per second is its unit you got it no so if any physical quantity is having magnitude and direction then it does not always imply that it is a vector so when you can say any physical quantity is a vector so what is that any physical quantity you can say it is a vector when the third condition of obeying laws of vector algebra has to be satisfied so what is that any physical quantity is said to be vector only when these obeying laws of vector algebra otherwise we cannot say vectors you can get some examples also for that so what are the examples for example if you see there are certain physical quantities like electric current the certain physical quantities the physical quantity current has 
both magnitude and direction but it, it is still scalar as it disobeys the laws of vector algebra you know what is physical quantity electric current electric current is one of the fundamental physical quantity huh? you can measure electric and electric uh, electric current by using an ammeter and it is it is due to the flow of charges in a conductor so you know that what is electric quantity actually the electric quantity i is given by what you can say for example you can see in this case the physical quantity i it is given by i i is equal to q by t so what is that q q is the charge flowing in a conductor but it is having a direction electric current having a direction it is always moves from positive to negative terminal it is having a magnitude 30 amps current means that t is magnitude ampere is its unit it is showing direction but it is not a vector quantity the reason it will not obey vector algebra loss of vector algebra okay let us move further let us try to understand the types of vector what is what exactly the types of vector what are the types of vector let us try to understand the first type is a equal vector when you say any vector any two vectors are equal vectors two vectors are said to be equal vectors if vector a and vector b are said to be equal when they have equal magnitude and same direction if you take any two vectors if two vectors they are two vectors vector a and vector b vector a and vector b what we are calling if vector a and vector b are said to be equal vectors when when they having equal magnitude as well as the same direction the direction of moment or direction of the vector should be same as well as they should have the same direction as well as equal magnitude such vectors we are calling equal vectors you got it no so what is that in that way okay let let us try to understand some more information about the vector vectors types of vector second one parallel vectors when two vectors you can say parallel two vectors are said to be parallel vectors two vectors vector a and vector b are said to be parallel vectors when there are two conditions you should know first both have same direction both have same direction second one what is the second condition one vector is scalar it is a positive non zero multiple of another vector if you say scalar multiplied with a vector it is a vector quantity for example imagine you having one vector vector a vector a you are having it is a vector a okay vector a huh? if you multiply two with that vector a its magnitude doubles but direction remains same so what is that then only you are saying such vectors are parallel vectors the first and for most conditions you should you should remember the first condition what is that actually first condition two vectors vector a and vector b are said to be parallel when both have the same direction as well as one vector is scalar and scalar that is a positive non zero multiple of another vector non zero multiple of another vector you got it no so parallel vector is the second type of a vector the next type let us try to understand see here you can get anti parallel vectors if there is a parallel vector there should be a an anti parallel vector what are anti parallel vectors two vectors vector a and vector b are said to be anti parallel vectors if you say there are two vectors vector a and vector b are said to be anti parallel vectors when when you say two vectors vector a and vector b are anti parallel vectors 
let us try to understand both have opposite directions what is meaning of that if one vector power direction and another vector reverse direction such vectors are said to be anti parallel vectors so what is that vector a and vector b these are anti parallel vectors when both have opposite directions okay let us try to understand what is the second condition if you look at the second condition one vector is a scalar non zero negative multiple of another vector one vector is a scalar non zero negative multiple of another vector you got it no so what is that two vectors vector a and vector b are said to be anti parallel vectors when both have opposite direction that indicates that if vector a tending towards right side vector b should tends towards left side these are said to be anti parallel vectors not only that one vector is scalar non zero negative multiple of another vector scalar non zero negative multiple of another vector see you can see in the previous slide so what you are getting actually so one vector is scalar non zero positive multiple of another vector such vectors are parallel vectors one vector is scalar multi, scalar non zero negative multiple of vector such vector is a an anti parallel vectors okay now let us try to understand the next point you got it no so what is that the next type of the vector the next type of the vector is nothing but what you can understand here fourth one collinear vectors collinear what is the meaning of word collinear the collinear means what okay let us try to see what about the collinear vector when the two vectors when the vectors under consideration vectors under consideration can share the same support or have a common support common support Huh? then the considered vectors are collinear common support then the considered vectors are collinear vectors you got it no they should have a common support or have common support you got it no the then the considered vectors are collinear okay next type of vector let us try to understand what is the next type of fifth type zero vectors zero vectors when we are saying any vector is a zero vector zero vector a vector having zero magnitude from the name itself one can understand any vectors having zero magnitude and arbitrary direction there is no proper direction for that arbitrary direction not known to us we cannot judge the direction of the zero vector is a zero vector so when you are saying any vector is a zero vector a vector having zero magnitude and arbitrary direction and direction is not known such vectors are said to be zero vectors next type of vector what you can say for example in this sixth one uh, unit vector unit vector what is the meaning of unit unit means a single unit means a single vector okay when you are saying any vector is a unit vector a vector divided by its magnitude a vector divided by its magnitude is a unit vector is a unit vector so unit vector is unit vector you can say any vector is unit vector when you can say any vector is unit vector if its vector so what you can say Uh, unit vector we will represent as a cap or read as a cap or a hat since if you see what is a cap a cap a cap it is nothing but the ratio of vector a to its magnitude a what does it mean so you can write immediately the vector a is equal to a magnitude of vector a and a cap this is nothing but unit vector so 
So what is that? The word a cap is unit vector. Word a cap is unit vector. Okay. Okay. Now let us try to understand the next one. Thus we can say what you can say actually. If you can say for example all the quantities. Thus we can say that unit vector gives the direction. What is the significance of the unit vector? Unit vector gives the direction. You got it? So, next, what we can understand. For example, the types of vectors here, the next type, seventh type, orthogonal unit vectors. Orthogonal unit vectors. What is the meaning of orthogonal unit vectors? If you see, any vector is said to be orthogonal unit vectors. So, there are three vectors what you are getting, I cap and J cap and K cap. These are orthogonal unit vectors. Uh, these vectors must form a right-handed triad. Right-handed triad. What is the meaning of right-handed triad? Okay, let us try to understand. What is I cap? What is J cap? What is K cap? These are called orthogonal unit vectors. These are called orthogonal unit vectors. Okay? Okay, let us check further what we can understand about the orthogonal unit vectors. When you are say I cap, what is the meaning of I cap? What is the meaning of J cap? What is the meaning of K cap? So, it is a coordinate system such that when we curl the fingers of the right hand from x to y, then we must get the direction of z along the thumb. Direction of z along the thumb. So, you know that there are, in case of Cartesian coordinate, there are three axes. Three axes. You got it, no? One axis is x axis, another one y axis, one more z axis. X axis, Y axis and Z axis. Okay. Now, along X axis, we are saying direction I cap. Along Y axis, we are saying direction J cap. Along Z axis, we are saying direction K cap. You got it, no? So, what is that? X I cap along X axis, J cap along Z axis and K cap along Z axis. So, I cap along X axis, J cap along Y axis and K cap along Z axis. So, the angle between I cap, I cap is perpendicular to J cap, J cap is perpendicular to K cap. That is why these three unit vectors are said to be orthogonal unit vectors. Orthogonal unit vectors. Okay. So, now you can easily understand here what what are the orthogonal unit vectors and how you will get the value of all the vectors. You got it? How you will get the value of all the vectors. If you see here, I cap is equal to, the I cap is equal to vector x by x. That indicates that vector x is equal to x into I cap. What is J cap? Vector y by y. That is vector y is equal to x into J cap. What is k cap? k cap is equal to vector z by z or vector z is equal to z into k cap. Vector z is equal to z into k cap. Okay. That is the one parameter. Okay. Now let us try to proceed. Then the next type of vector. So next type of vector is nothing but it is a polar vectors. Polar vectors. Huh? When you are saying any vector is a polar vector. Okay, let us try to understand. In case of polar vectors, these have starting point. These have starting point or point of application. Example, displacement and force. Polar vectors. They have starting point or point of application. Example, displacement and force are polar vectors. Any vectors having starting point or point of application. Such vectors are said to be polar vectors. Okay. Now, next type of vector, what we should understand. Here, 
ninth one axial vectors when you are saying any vectors are axial vectors the axial vectors are nothing but these vectors these represent a rotational effect rotational effect it is related to rotational motion rotational effect and are always along the axis of rotation axial vectors represent rotational effects and are always along the axis of rotation in accordance with the right hand screw rule right hand screw rule that you should remember now what is right hand screw rule or we can so we can study in next videos in detail these represents rotational effects and are always along the axis of rotation in accordance with the right hand screw rule okay now let us try to understand what is the meaning of the axial vectors along with the diagram and what are the examples for axial vectors in case of examples for axial vectors you can see what are the examples so any rotational motion it is able to provide the axial vectors so what is that anything what is that we are saying for example if there is one object and that object moves in a circular motion in a circular motion you are getting angular displacement and angular velocity is example for axial vector torque is a rotational force is an example for axial vector angular momentum is an example for axial vector or so what is that angular velocity torque angular momentum are examples of some physical quantities of axial vectors okay now let us try to understand how you will spe specify the axial vector or in case of that axial vector it should have a proper axis of rotation so what is that axis of rotation in general always perpendicular to the plane perpendicular to the plane so there are two types of rotation possible you know that one type is a anti clockwise motion another type is a clockwise motion clockwise rotation anti clockwise rotation for clockwise anti clockwise rotation axial vector upwards as shown in the diagram so this is the diagram what shows okay for anti clockwise rotation for clockwise rotation axis of rotation downward so you should remember if rotation is anti clockwise axial vector upward if rotation is clockwise axis of rotation downward so what is that axis of rotation axial vector you got it no so it is clearly given in the diagram okay now it is nothing but in the types of vectors almost we studied all the types of vector the last one it is 10th one coplanar vector coplanar vectors when we you will say any vectors are coplanar three or more vectors are called coplanar vectors coplanar vectors if they lie in the same plane if they lie in the same plane two free vectors are always coplanar if you get two free vectors vector a and vector b these are two free vectors these two free vectors always lie in the same plane uh, coplanar vectors but three or more than vector three vectors are called coplanar